Hi guys, it is Aoife here with my weekly wrap up. I got loads read this week so I'm just going to go straight on into all the books I read. The first book I completed this week was The Quaker Cafe by Brenda Bevan Rems. I think that's uh, the full author name. Um, this was actually my TBR pick from a couple of months ago, um, so yeah, got that done. This is about a woman called Liz who, um, when she was in her 20s, she married into this kind of Quaker community. Um, her husband is, was was brought up as a Quaker, his parents are very devout Quakers. Um, and she's kind of uh, brought up her children in this community. And um, now she's in her 40s, her two older sons um, are married and settled, her two younger sons are still in school. Um, and her best friend's father dies um, and then after that other a few other things kind of happen and all these kind of questions start being raised about, about things that happened um, before she was around and she ends up having to kind of investigate a couple of things for her friends and she kind of ends up discovering some secrets um, within the community and some dark past um, within the community and she's kind of just figuring out how to go about this um, and how to kind of lessen her friend's pain with some of the things she has found out um, and at the same time she has just been busy kind of looking after her friend and um, getting her son's wedding organised and um, just being a general kind of mum to her kids and a husband or a wife to her husband and yeah so she has like all these different things going on. This one was okay for me, it wasn't great and um, I did enjoy kind of seeing how Quakers live and kind of learning more about kind of things Quakers believe and stuff like that because I would never really know that at all and um, this was a lot more serious than I thought it was as well like I mean I kind of thought this was kind of going to be a cute contemporary book and part of it was but another part of it was actually quite serious um, and there was some stuff in it that was to do with kind of um, uh, racial tensions particularly like uh, in the like the 50s and 60s um, and some stuff that happened in the community that is obviously very very taboo and is very very hard to talk about um, and I just yeah there was just parts of this book that made me a little bit uncomfortable um, and I would really love to know what a person of colour makes of some of the topics that were brought up in this book and how it was done and if it was done sensitively I guess um, because obviously as a white person I would have you know I I don't think I may, might see this with the same eyes that other people might I don't know and um, but I would just be very interested in finding that out. There were definitely parts in this that did make me laugh though um, and I did enjoy a lot of it um, and I did definitely like I read this in like within one day so I did speed through pretty quickly and um, I am not sure if I'd read I think there's another book like set in the town um, this is I don't know whether like there's going to be more except the two that's already out but the thing is this isn't like like it's not like the Lucky Harbour series by Jill Chalvis where you have this really cute little country town where you know you want to go back and like you want to know all the different characters in it like I found that a majority of this the only really people that I actually really liked were Liz and her friends like everyone else in the community are not very nice um, and so I wouldn't necessarily want to go back to reading about like another story about this like town because I just didn't think they were very nice people um, so I think like that's probably a bit of a downfall with this book because you know you want you'd want you want to go back it, like if you're going to have stories set with different people in the same town you want to keep going back to that town and I don't want to go back to this town so yeah so I gave this a three out of five stars the next book I read was we are all completely beside ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler and um, this is a book that my a friend of mine has been telling me to read for ages and I've just had it on my shelf and eventually I decided I was definitely going to pick it up um I'm really glad I did this is another book that I read like in completely in like one day and um, this is about a girl called Rosemary she is um in her 20s early 20s she's in college um and she's starting to question a lot of stuff that happened when she was younger um she hasn't seen her brother in 10 years and she hasn't seen her sister in 15 years and there's like something that happened when she was younger which caused her sister to disappear and basically she never really raised much questions about what happened and now she's kind of starting to think like you know what did happen um what exactly was her fault in what happened and um, like did she have anything really to do with the with why her sister disappeared um and she's kind of like discovering this and then she has some new friends come up and she's kind of doing all these like crazy adventures with these friends kind of coming out of herself a little bit um and that's all I really want to say because this is a book that you kind of I feel like you need to go in not knowing 
the kind of the twist in this and the twist comes pretty early the twist comes after a few chapters and um, but I definitely was not expecting it at all and I just thought it was really really clever and um, I do think this was pretty interesting um, in terms of looking at how people are raised and how people's early years can really define the type of person they become when they're older like even like a lot of stuff that Rosemary talks about a lot of the ways she was brought up when she was very small um, directly linked to how she interacts with people well, like her entire life um, and how she kind of thinks about people her entire life um, and I just thought that was really really interesting I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars um, I really really enjoyed it I thought the writing was really really great in it as I said the twist was brilliant um, there's part of this that really really make you think um, about specific things I don't want to say what specifically because I feel like that would give away part of the plot um, just kind of opens your eyes a little bit about some things that are done in this world. So yeah, four out of five stars, really enjoyed this and I do really recommend it to other, other readers. Another short book I read this week was from Net Galley, it was called Whale Song by Margaret Grabowicz um, and this is, this is like a really really short like kind of book just with information about different things and this one is about whales um, and specifically this kind of looks at whales and their relationships with humans and how a lot of things that whales do and like kind of whale relationships with each other and just, just a lot of whale facts and how they correlate with things that human, humans do and how a lot of whale facts end up helping humans do different things. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, this was okay for me. I thought I was going to enjoy it better because I like really love like reading about nature. But there are parts of this that I kind of found just kind of rambled on a little bit. Like this is a really short book and it does pack a lot into a really short book. Um, but there are times that it kind of went on a tangent talking about like human things or things about different animals like they kept talking about this like dolphin called Peter who was apparently this famous dolphin he lived with this woman um, and they apparently had like a weird sexual relationship or something and I kind of kept coming back to that but I was like yeah but this isn't about dolphins this is about whales um, and they're a little bit separate like that like I would have just liked it to be in if, like a proper just facts book about whales and not facts a book about whales and other things and whales and things related to whales kind of I don't know I just it was okay I don't really know how to talk about it but um yeah it was just it was okay and I gave it a three out of five stars the next book I finished was an audiobook and it was Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney this is an audiobook I've been listening to for the last couple of weeks and it wasn't a particularly long audiobook but for some reason it took me quite a while to get through it and um, this is basically about a woman in the 80s it's a 1982 or like the late 80s um could be the early 80s I think um, and she's basically just walking around New York on New Year's Eve um, and she's kind of just talking about her life and reminiscing about her life, about her young, about like her marriage, um, her job, her, her family um, and just different things that happened throughout her life. Um, and this was okay for me, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. It took me a while to get into the audiobook um, but eventually I did end up really really enjoying the sound of the audiobook because the narrator's voice I can't think of the narrator but I'll put it down below um, the narrator's voice was like kind of real gravelly and like like it sounded like a woman an old woman like she she really really sounded like someone who has seen a lot of years and maybe smoked a little bit like in her youth and yeah she just had like that raspy like that raspy voice full of wisdom and yeah I just at first I found it hard and she had like a real New York accent as well and um, at first I found it a little bit hard to understand and at times it kind of kind of kept drifting off a little bit when I was listening to it but then eventually I ended up really really liking it. I don't know if I would have liked this more if I had read it um, but I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Um, I did really enjoy the last few chapters um, and that's when I really really got into the book um, but it did seem to take me a while just to I don't know get a connection with the characters I think in connection with the story I just felt really disconnected to it for a while and I don't know again I don't know if it was just something to do with myself and how I was feeling those couple of weeks I was reading it but overall like it is a good no it, like it's a pretty good book and um, it just wasn't the type of book that I thought it was going to be the next book I finished this week was uh, Best Day Ever by Cara Ruda this is like a domestic suspense thriller um, and it's basically about this married couple who seemingly have the perfect life um, and they're going on a weekend away to their lake house um, and it seems like it's going to be like the best day ever, the best weekend ever but actually the husband Paul is planning to kill his wife Mia by the end of the trip. Basically this entire book is all in Paul's point of view and we kind of see how he thinks about himself which like he thinks he's like the best thing ever, like the best thing since sliced bread um, and how he treats women and how he treats other people he believes are like below his station and 
this was just a little bit of a disappointment for me um I did I should say I got this off um Harper Collins uh in exchange for an honest review um and when I saw like the the kind of email about this book um asking if I wanted to read it I just thought I don't know I just thought I was like yeah that like, sounds really good um it sounds really original uh this is going to be like so scary and it wasn't it was actually like pretty dull um I just think I wanted like more I don't know like I just wanted more scariness more thrill um and I didn't feel that with this book at all most of the time Paul like Paul was an absolute creep like and I think like if that's what Kara wanted to do like she got it down perfectly like he was such a creep like I felt like ugh, every time like I was reading about him like every time I picked up the book I just uh, he just he was just such a slime ball and there were some things that he said and some of his reactions were weren't quite realistic sometimes um and I'm like well but like would a person in real life act like that and would a person in real life say things like that um and even some of Mia's reactions didn't seem completely real life either I don't know um I did have some questions about like how they acted at, at, po at points um but yeah the only thing I can say about that is this it was just a little bit dull but I do think I do think maybe I just went into it wanting a bit more than like what want like I just went into it with like probably too high expectations um and maybe people who are more into like the domestic suspense kind of genre of thrillers would maybe like this more than me so I gave this a two out of five stars the last book I finished this week thanks be to Jesus was 4321 by Paul Oster this guy is such a big book this is like 860 pages and I'm gonna be honest the first thought I had when I finished the last page of this book was thank god I finally finished it um I've been reading it for about two weeks I think um maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit more than two weeks um but this is basically about a boy called Ferguson. His name is Archie Ferguson, um, and he is born in the late forties, early fifties. Um, and this book is basically about him growing up. And there's like four different versions of him. Basically, we see the first chapter. We see him up to a certain point, and then it breaks off into four different Fergusons and how his life changes in different ways. Um, and the type of type of boy and man he becomes when each of these different things happen in his life. Um and it was really really interesting like it was quite like a original idea um, and it's like so long like you really get into depth with each like version of Ferguson um, and I really enjoyed seeing how different people kept coming back into his life no matter what type of like person he was and um, he still ended up being kind of attracted to the same people or attracted to the same kind of like um like in each each one he kind of is a very creative kind of person he likes writing and watching movies and he likes kind of like doing reviews and stuff like that and I, I really liked seeing that like in each book that's what he really really liked to do he really loved reading he loved literature um and yeah um there was a lot of stuff in this because obviously he is kind of like a teenager in the 60s and he is like coming up to he's kind of like finishing up high school and going into college like when the Vietnam War is going on and like the protests around the Vietnam War um so there's a lot of like information around that there's information about like you know um JFK and his assassination um and Martha Luther King um and he's like I had a dream of speech like this bit where Ferguson sits down with his family and watches that um and there's like all these different other things like with about racial ten or kind of racial tension and racial upset um and people protesting against like uh, racial tension um, particularly in New York because most of this is set in New York um, and different things that happen around like um, college students and stuff like that around these different things um, and that was pretty interesting because I obviously don't really know much about that but I think people who maybe live in New York um, would really enjoy that as well like it's kind of like a history of New York in a way in parts of it so it was pretty good and um, there were parts where that were definitely longer than they should have been like I think there were chunks of this book that could have been removed um, and there were times like they went on it went on tangents and like it went on like lists and stuff like that like lists of books he was reading or lists of films he was watching or lists of like actors and stuff that he was listing out for whatever reason and like some of that didn't need to be in there because it was just like lists of names and I just kind of skipped them a lot of the time because I was like I don't need to know all of this um so yeah um, I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was pretty good, um, but it definitely could have been shorter. And But I am glad I read it, especially seeing that it has been shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize. Um, so, yeah. 
so that is everything I have read this week please let me know what you guys are reading if you've read any of the books I read all the usual kind of stuff and I'll see you guys again next time